Hello, my name is Brian Mitov, the president of Mitov Software, and in this session, I will demonstrate creating Internet of Things solutions with Delphi and Arduino. What is Arduino? From the hardware point of view, Arduino is a low-cost, open-source hardware microcontroller board. It is resilient, difficult to damage hardware. There is a huge number of clones of the original board and new clones are coming literally every day. It is simple to use for hardware designs and being a microcontroller, it is very good for real-time tasks. From a software point of view, it is a uniform development environment and API that can be used to program a multitude of platforms. Originally, Arduino started with a single platform, and as it became popular, other platforms created compatible API and adopted the same uniform software tools. So many Arduino projects can be used with different boards without the necessity of any significant change. Over the years, many boards have adopted Arduino, including TNC, Edison, Galileo, and even Raspberry Pi and its clones. Here are some examples of Arduino boards and clones. You can see that they can come with variety of sizes, shapes from items the size of a coin, with just few digital or analog ports, all the way to boards with more than 50 digital ion pins, as well as boards designed in the shape of robots, boards designed for variety of specialized shapes, including boards for wearable clothes. Here are even more examples. Some of the boards, like the LinkedIn one, has built-in Wi-Fi, as well as GSM connectivity and GPS right within the board. Others require the addition of shields in order to support such functionalities. They are boards designed and ready for industrial control, as well as boards designed for extremely small development. Even some of the small boards, like this one, have the capability of using stackable shields. Why you would use Arduino for Internet of Things? The Arduino boards are usually very cheap. Some of the devices are as cheap as $2 or less. Many of them offer a large number of digital and analog channels. There is a huge number of connectivity options through shields and built-in modules, including Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GSM, GPRS, and many others. There is a large variety of sizes, starting with as small as a coin, all the way to pound-sized boards. There is also a huge variety of readily available peripherals. The Arduino boards typically have very low power consumption and can operate from battery for long periods of time. The Arduino community provides a uniform Arduino development environment called Arduino IDE. The Arduino IDE is a very minimalistic development environment. It very much simply allows you to edit one fairly simple file using a relatively simple C++ code. Since the Arduino boards do not use real operating system, the code is executed primarily in two sections. There is an initialization section that will be executed when the board is powered up, and then there is a loop section where repeated code will be executed. Very much the simplest code for Arduino is the code to turn on and off an LED. In the Arduino community, this demo is referred as the blink demo. Here is the code necessary to blink an LED. First, we have to configure the digital pin that we want to control as an output pin. 
Once when we have done that in the setup section, in our roof section, we will set the pin to high, wait one second, set it to low, and wait another second. And this loop will keep executing over and over again. Now that we have written the code, it's time to upload it to the board. The Arduino ID allows you to generate code for a large variety of boards, and you can install more boards. In this case, I will be uploading the code to my Arduino Mega. And I will use the default processor. I also need to select the COM port, which is a virtual COM port over USB connection on which my Arduino is connected. Once this is done, I can generate and upload the code. In the Arduino ID, there are two options. By clicking on this button, I can compile the code. And by clicking on this button, I can compile the code as well as upload it to the board. The code is compiling and now is uploaded to the board. This is my Arduino Mega board. It has two shields on top of it, an Ethernet shield and a shield for connecting graphical LCD displays. And underneath the shields, you can see that the LED connected to digital pin 13 is flashing once a second. If I want to program another board with the same program, as example, Controlino Maxi, I can select it from the Arduino ID as a target, select the proper COM port, and upload the very same sketch. Here you can see that the is flashing once a second. All this sounds great. However, once when we start using Arduino, we very soon run into challenges. The development tool, as demonstrated, is very rudimentary and cumbersome to use. When dealing with the hardware, Arduino usually requires relatively low-level programming and careful planning for timing. Most people have no problem connecting hardware to Arduino, but they usually get lost on the programming side. There is practically no debugging at present in Arduino. The only debugging is through print messages over serial port, which is time-consuming, cumbersome, and error-prone. When Arduino is used for collecting data, there is no easy way to visualize the data besides just printing it in a serial terminal. There are no readily available tools to communicate with Arduino from Delphi and C++ Builder. Let's switch to our sketch and take a look at some of those issues. We just saw how we blink LED. We turn it on, wait a while, turn it off, and wait a while. But what if we need to blink two LEDs, and each of them blinking at different rate? We cannot use this code because the code is effectively a single thread code. While it is waiting for one second here, it cannot do anything else. Yes, in Arduino, you can program interrupts, but that makes it even more complex and requires even more low-level programming. You can also use a complex calculation based on the elapsed microseconds and decide what pin to turn on and off, but even such simple task will take quite a while to accomplish. There has to be a better way. Here is where Visuino comes to play. Visuino is a graphical development environment for Arduino. 
it automatically generates Arduino code and programs the boards. It has built-in data visualization. It has direct mapping of software and hardware components. It provides uniform communication over serial or socket-based channels. And it includes serial port and socket communications components compatible with communication lab for Delphi and C++ Builder. Here is how it all works. Visuino allows you to graphically design your project. Once when you're done, by a click of a button, you can automatically generate Arduino code. The Arduino code will be open in the Arduino IDE, and from there, as we demonstrated, it can be programmed into a variety of platforms. When you start with Zuino, in the central part of the screen will be the editing area. A board component will automatically appear and will always stay there, allowing you to connect other components to the board. On the left top side, there is a navigation screen showing you the overview of the graphical editing area. And below it, there is object inspector allowing you to edit the currently selected component. On the right side, there is a component toolbar from where you can select and drop components. The components are organized into categories and subcategories. The same component can appear in multiple categories. Below the graphical editing area is the communication panel. In this panel, you can monitor the communication in a text terminal or using scope component. First, we'll create the same Blink application. To do that, we'll need a pulse generator. And we'll connect the pulse generator to pin 13. Our program is ready. Now we can generate the Arduino code. To do that, we'll click on this button. This will generate the code and will start the Arduino IDE. Here is the generated code. Once this is done, we can again compile and program our Arduino board. Our first Visuino project has been completed. If we want another blinking LED with different frequency, all we need to do is drop another pulse generator and connect it to a different pin. Now we can set the blinking frequency for the second LED. As example, seven times a second. We can even control the frequency with another signal, as example, a sine wave. To control the frequency of the pulse generator, we need to add a pin through visual light binding. To do that, we'll go to the frequency property, click on the pin button and add a sync pin. Then connect the sine generator to the pulse generator. Again, we can generate the code, compile and upload it. We can also add the option to enable or disable each of the pulse generators. Again, we can add a pin through the visual light binding, in this case for the enable property. And we can do the same for the second pulse generator. And we can connect those pins to appropriate digital pins to control the enable disable for the pulse generators. You can see how easy it is to create already fairly complex Arduino projects in mere seconds. And again, our code is quickly ready to be uploaded to the board.
If, for example, we want to monitor the values in the analog generator from Visuino, we can connect the output of the generator to the serial port, generate the code, compile and upload it, select the port on which the device is connected in Visuino and connect. You will see that the data arrives in text form from Arduino and we can monitor it in the scope. In this case, it is a sine wave. In Visuino, you can connect multiple data sources to the serial port. As example, we can monitor what is happening on this pin or what data arrives from this analog pin. As well as the data from one of the pulse generators. As you can see, we have a mixture of data and this is very confusing. Visuino offers an easy solution for this problem. We can add a package component The component allows us to add different channels, such as analog channels, digital channels, color channels, and many more. To use the component, we also need to add a unique header marker. We can put any number here. This marker will ensure that we can easily discover the beginning of the packet. Now we can connect the output of the packet component to the serial, connect the pins we had connected before to the corresponding channels of the packet component, disconnect them from the serial port, Compile and upload the project. If we switch to the communication panel, we can select the packet components and the communication panel will automatically configure for it. It will add one more tab with instrumentation and it will add all the necessary channels in our scope component. Now we can connect and monitor the communication. you can see the different channels and the values on them. To make the signal more interesting, I will add another signal generator, in this case a random generator, and I will connect it instead of my external analog pin. If we connect, we'll see the two signals and now the scope will look more interesting. In addition to the packet communication component, Arduino offers corresponding unpacket component allowing serial communication between Arduino boards. As we will see later, we can do exactly the same on the Delphi side and have Arduino to Delphi or C++ Builder communication. Now that you're familiar with the basic communication with Arduino and controlling simple LEDs, let's take a look at some of the other available components and options. A typical component that we often need to control is a stepper motor. We can add a stepper motor by dropping the motor's component and we can connect all of the pins of the motor at once to corresponding pins on the Arduino board. The stepper motor can be set to enable a certain speed or we can connect a pin 
to manually control the stepping. We can also add a sync pin through visual live binding to control the motor, as example with one of the analog pins. In this case, we'll control its speed. As shown earlier, we can also control the enable disable of the motor through a digital pin, pulse generator, or any other source of Boolean values. We can also control a servo. It is very easy, as example, to control a servo with potentiometer by just connecting analog input with the corresponding pin of the servo and then selecting which digital pin the servo will control. If, as example, we want to control the servo instead of from analog pin with ultrasonic distance sensor, we can easily add such sensor as well. For this sensor, we'll need to connect two pins, one generating the pin signal and the other receiving the echo, and the measured output now can be connected to control our servo. We can control the servo position by moving our hand above ultrasonic finger. Visuino also offers a variety of display options, as example, an LCD display. Visuino offers support for I2C and direct pin displays. All I need to do is drop the display and connect it to the I2C port. I can simply send values to the display, in which case the display will scroll the text, or I can do something more interesting. I can add specific fields, as example, a text field saying value one, an analog field to display the value. And I can specify on which row and column the field will be positioned. As example, I can say row 10. In this case, the first field will be at column zero, row zero. The second field will be at column zero, row 10. Once that I have done that, I can display the analog value in that field. And I can even specify the precision with which the value will be displayed. If I want to change the board to a different board, I can do that from this button. As example, I can switch to Arduino Mega. Visuino will try to preserve all existing connections, if that is possible. If I switch to some really small board, like the Trinket, Visuino will still attempt its best to preserve the design. And we can quickly make the small remaining necessary changes. In addition, we have a full visual undo redo functionality. We can see how our design look at every single point of time and we can undo and redo to that point. There are many more options to display data than using LED or LCD. The latest version of Visuino includes support even for TV out. And we can draw a variety of shapes on the screen or print text at specific positions. As example, we can add a circle and a text field at specific position and hook the text with one of the analog pins. For the circle slide position, we can also add a sync pin and control it with integer value. As example, from one 
of the analog pins. Now we can connect a TV set with composite input and we can display a picture on it. Now that you're familiar with Visuino, let's see how we can communicate to it from Delphi and C++ Builder. Here is how Visuino integrates with the rest of the Mito Software's products. Mito Software offers communication lab for Delphi, C++ Builder, Visual C++, and .NET solutions such as C Sharp and Visual Basic .NET, which allows Arduino's program with Visuino to communicate with any of those environments without the need of writing any code. In addition, OpenWire Studio has the same communication capabilities as Visuino and that you can communicate. We'll start with a new Visuino project. We'll add a sign generator and we'll connect it to the serial port of the Arduino. And we'll program our board. In Delphi, I will create a new VCL form application. I will add a COM port component and a terminal component. I will connect them in the OpenWire view. I will double click on the COM port to select the port on which my board is connected, compile and run the application. You can see the data arriving in my application from Arduino. Now I will reopen our structured communication demo. In Delphi, I will add unpacket component, remove the terminal. In the unpacket component, I will add two floating point channels and two binary channels. And I will set a header marker at 5555. Then I will connect the two components. To display the data, I will use a scope as well as some gauges. And for the binary channels, some LEDs. I'll add additional channel to the scope and I'll connect the analog channels to it as well as to the two gauges. Finally, the two binary channels into the LEDs. For the two gauges, I will set a maximum value of 1 as the data will have values between 0 and 1. Compile and run. You can see the data arriving in the application. If I want to access the receiving data in my code, I can use generic filters. As example, generic real value. I can connect the corresponding channel and then inside my event, I can receive and work with the data. The same functionality is available in C++ build. Now that we know how to communicate our serial port, let's change the communication to using sockets. For the Arduino board, I can add an Ethernet shield. First, I need to assign a MAC address to my shield. I will use one from the online demos. Second, I will assign a static IP address so I can easily 
find my Arduino on the network. And now anyway, I also will disable DHCP so the static address will be enforced. Finally, I will add a server socket. And I will set a port for the socket. All I need to do is take the output of the packet communication and connect it to the pin of the server socket. I can leave the communication going both to the serial as well as the server socket, or I can disconnect the serial. Program and upload my sketch. In Delphi, to change from serial to socket communication, all I need to do is add a client socket. Set the port, the IP address, delete the COM port, and connect my socket to the unpacked component. Compile and run the application. You can see the data arriving over the network. Earlier, we mentioned that we have the same communication options inside OpenWire Studio. OpenWire Studio is a graphical development environment for Windows very similar to Visuino. It has COM port component, terminal component, as well as packet and packet components. And we can use them the same way. We can run in debug mode, where we can monitor the data as it flows between the components, or at run mode, where we can just monitor the visual components. We can also use sockets. run exactly the same way. Finally, we'll look at some other communication options available in Visuino. We can also add Wi-Fi shield or GSM shield. The Wi-Fi shield works very similar to the Ethernet shield and we can add sockets here too. The GSM shield has packet service, which also allows adding sockets. All of those sockets can be connected and the data can be sent to all of those channels simultaneously, or the data can be connected to individual channels. Some other boards, such as the LinkedIn LAN, have built-in Wi-Fi and GSM modules. We can add sockets to those the same way. And we can send data through those sockets. Finally, we also have the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. This module can be connected to a serial port on one side and can have its own sockets. 
it performs Wi-Fi communication on its own and sends that data to the Arduino board. The Arduino board will directly use the data from the connected sockets. In this case, we can send one of the channels to this socket. You can see that we have a large variety of communication options available both on the Delphi side as well as on the Visuino side. With all of those socket-based communications, we can simply use the client socket component on the Delphi side to receive or send data. This concludes our session. Once again, my name is Boyan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software. My email is mitov at mitov.com. Our website is www.mitov.com and we offer the following products. VideoLab, a video processing library, AudioLab, audio processing library, SignalLab, digital signal processing library, VisionLab, computer vision library, PlotLab, data visualization library, InstrumentLab, visual instrumentation library, Intelligence Lab, Artificial Intelligence Library, Logic Lab, Boolean Logic Library, Animation Lab, Universal Animation Library, Communication Lab, Serial and Ethernet Communication Library, Visual Live Binding, Universal Visual Live Binding Library, OpenWire Studio, a graphical development environment for Windows, Visuino, a graphical development environment for Arduino, we also maintain some open source libraries, including the OpenWire library and iGDI Plus, a Delphi friendly GDI Plus library. Thank you for listening, and now it's time for questions and answers. Okay, David, I hear, and let me uh, unmute Boyan. Let's see. Okay, Boyan, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yep, great. So it's. Uh, Sounds good. A uh, couple questions have come in. Let's see. Why is the term shield used? I know what a shield is. It's those piggyback boards that you that you plug onto your Arduino boards. But do you know the history or why it's called a shield? Yeah, quite frankly, I have not specifically checked for the history. Uh, Arduino originates from Italy, so. Uh, I would expect that knights have something to do with it. Also, assuming the approximate shape of the board probably resembles a knight's shield, uh, but that's, of course, just my guess. I never really have checked the origination of the term. Okay. I'll have to go, and maybe there's a... Um you know, some kind of Wikipedia entry or history of, uh, of the term shield. Maybe somebody, if somebody else knows, they can chime into the Q&A log. That'd be great. But I don't know. Okay, sorry. Okay, can't type this morning. Um, let's see. Uh, here's, I'm working with Arduino with real protoboard and traditional way. Visuino has the virtual visual way is is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, uh, in essence, Visuino generates real code that executes inside the boards. So there is no virtual programming there. It's all physical programming. It all generates real actual code that executes inside the board. Yeah, and in the C plus plus builder track here people should feel very comfortable with the, the actual programming language for the Arduino and, and what gets generated and then compiled and then passed on to the Arduino board, right? Absolutely. Yep. It's the same language. Um, yes. Now, you mentioned, you know, you have these, you're working on these components um, the, to, be, to allow applications built with Red Studio to talk to the Arduino, get send bytes, get bytes, and so on through through, uh, you know, through, what is it, TCPIP, is that it, or does it go through the USB cable? It, it goes through both. Uh, the library supports communication both directly through the cable, a uh, USB cable uh, uh, COM port, in essence, uh, as well as uh, Ethernet type of communication over Wi-Fi or Internet or, or, or physical Ethernet. Yeah, I know I can plug in kind of a little 
board to add Wi-Fi or add uh, Ethernet Correct. as well. Yep. Correct. And some of the books like uh, LinkedIn, one as example, they have building uh, on the on the on the Arduino itself. They have building uh, uh, Wi-Fi communication, so you you don't need any additional shields or anything. The 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 board itself has the capability. And Controlino, which I demonstrated, the Controlino Maxi here building uh, Ethernet uh, connectors, so you can directly hook it to the Ethernet. Okay, and you were mentioning along the way, when you talk about the components, you were mentioning Delphi. Uh, do the components work with C++ Builder as well? Yes, I mentioned that. Uh, the components uh, work both with C++ Builder and Delphi, and actually when I did the other sessions since it was shown in uh, C++ uh, Builder, I showed some of that and uh, I was showing it both in C++ and in Delphi, so it's, it's exactly the same thing, you drop exactly the same components, uh, there, is, there is practically no difference between Delphi and C++ Builder in terms of that. And here's a question, I think it's uh, it says does, and maybe it's Visuino probably, include simulate every sensor in today's real world or, or will there be more as, as more sensors become available for Arduino? I know you have a lot of the common ones and you keep adding more, right Boyan? Uh, that is... Oh gotta... wait, sorry, I, I, I muted you, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you, you muted me by mistake. Uh, the way it works is at the moment there is a large number of sensors uh, that are added as well as peripherals and I keep adding uh, new ones literally every day. So the way this window works is uh, we sell it for $9.99 and you have the option to purchase in addition to that for another $9.99 you can uh, purchase uh, one, well, when you buy it, it comes with three months of updates. So when I add new sensors, and I add new sensors very often uh, per feedback from the customers, uh, as I add new sensors, you will get all of those new sensors and new boards because there are new Arduino boards coming almost every day. Um, and uh, then if you want to keep getting updates after those three months, for another $9.99 you can get one year of free updates and you can set up that as a subscription so every year you will be charged $9.99 and you will keep getting uh, whatever new sensors and uh, boards and devices are added to Vizuino. So it, since it's, it's growing extremely rapidly, uh, that's uh, that's probably a reasonable thing to do if you want to be uh, really kept up to date. Okay, um, where I, I I put into the Q and A log the Visuino website www.visuino.com is that the right place for people to go? Correct, correct. That is the right place. Thank you. And then um, when they go there, I see. I was trying to think. Uh, where would, is it available for purchase yet or are you still beta testing? It is still in beta, though uh, in the beta group I have made uh, the purchasing option available. Uh, actually we are working to make the purchasing option available on the site today or tomorrow. The web team is working on that right at this moment. Uh, so we plan to go out of beta in the next probably two days, depending on when the website exactly is going to be ready. Vizuino itself is ready for prime time. The website is a little bit behind as usual. So it's all a matter of when the website will be up to sniff and uh, we can announce it officially released. And then I put in the link to the Google Plus community both in the chat window and Q&A log. That's uh, a link off the Vizuino page about the beta and the community where you can get to all of this information and, and purchasing and so on. I, I can't wait for the the party when when it's really fully live and shipping. I mean, it's there already, but uh, but for for uh, yeah for the internet celebration, there are a lot of developers hooked into the Visuino Arduino developer community. I, I don't know if it's over 7,000 yet or, or, or we're at... We're not 7,000 yet, but uh, we're approaching. 
Yeah, and it's, so there's a lot of very active people, excited people doing development, giving feedback. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's come so far from, uh, for those of you that are in the C, you're in the C++ track, uh, Boyan showed this to us. He just had, he had something he was working on he wanted to show us back in February during Delphi Week. We had Delphi Week 2015. And we had Boyan on talking about Meetup software and Delphi components and programming. And then he said, well, I have this one thing I, I'd like to show everybody. So if you weren't with us at Delphi Week, because this is the C++ room, um, I think that was where you first publicly showed it, right, over the Internet? Uh, absolutely. Actually, I showed you a version which literally has started working the previous night. And it was of the idea which was just five days old. So you saw a five days old idea which just has started working a few hours earlier before I showed it to you. No, it's awesome, boy, and this uh, this world of IoT, this world of of makers, of people um, using these boards to control houses and machines and industrial automation and all sorts of things that are these low-cost um, boards and devices uh, is, is just really spectacular. And to, have, and to have some of this built using the CodeGear developer tools and, the, and be, building components and integrating uh, what you can do in C++ Builder uh, to talk to these boards and then the things that are connected to us is, is, uh, is just a real revolution. That's just my opinion. So. Thank you. And I have no, you know, I, I'm not an owner of, I mean, have Arduino boards, so I play with them, but uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not paid by Metoff, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not associated in any way with Metoff software other than as a, as a fellow developer and a cheerleader. So there you go. There's my, Thank you. There's my disclaimer, boy. Thank you. And boy, and if you just, we have just a couple minutes left. Uh, do you have any sort of last words or, or other things you'd like to say before I get ready for the next session? Oh, well, I, I can just say uh, that I'm sorry the some of the videos, I mean, the video seemed to be getting a little bit behind the audio when it is played um, in, the, uh, in the broadcast. So I am sorry about the annoyance. I will post and I'm sure Amber Kader will also post the replays and the, the video and the audio and battery in sync. And also, yeah, I wish I could show more hardware, but when I'm recording with camera, Camtasia is not recording very well from a uh, virtual machine. So the video is rather choppy and uh, spotty there. So I decided that uh, I can show only just a uh, couple of bots uh, briefly. I wish I could show more hardware. It, it is really uh, a new exciting world of all of those small devices, gadgets, and all of those Arduino boards that are coming literally every single day. Uh, it's, it's just so much fun. And uh, I mean, if, if, if you guys want to have good time, this is the way to have good time and uh, play with some code. Trust me, uh, I'm not lying to you. Yep, and uh, let's see, what am I doing here? I have to go no to there and yes to there. Uh, this is the, hopefully it shows up, this is the Google Plus community, and you just, you need to join. You need to log in using your Google Plus, your Gmail account, and then uh, go and uh, click on that link uh, that I put, and you can, there's betas, there's video tutorials, um, there's lots of, people with articles and links in there being very active. Uh, so uh, get out there and join that community. Uh, if you don't have an Arduino board, uh, you could pick one up for almost nothing uh, and, and start having fun and adding that to your bag of tips and tricks and technologies for providing solutions for customers or going out into new, into new industry areas and, uh, and opportunities. So. Again, Boyan, thank you so much. You're welcome, and uh, thank you for running this fantastic uh, show this week.